thank you very much for having me and it's an honor to be sharing the platform with some, um, such incredible activists and as the granddaughter of a man who was dragged out of his house for standing up to a dictator um, at the age of when I was four I saw that I know how hard your political um, fight is and in solidarity I stand with you all. Um, I'm here, actually it's quite ironic to be here at a human rights conference talking about female genital mutilation. Um, eight years ago when I started the campaign to say that um, FGM was a form of violence against women and girls and we should be looking at it as a human rights violation, I was told to stop I was told to go away and think about it because it was an issue of development and not democracy. Um, the reality is that for 4,000 years, a silent um, gender genocide has been going on. And today, 2 million women, um, 200 million women are living with the consequence of FGM. And between now and 2030, another 70 million um, young girls are at risk of female genital mutilation. In a world where we strive for prosperity, there can never be true prosperity if the most vulnerable um, citizens within our societies are being subjected to such a horrific form um, of violence. I am really grateful to be here and I can really say that there is a tangible reality that we can end FGM. My own government within the United Kingdom has been very supportive. In 2013, we committed 30, um, 36 million to end FGM and last year we committed 50 million to end FGM. The work that I did with Daughters of Eve was essentially to change the narrative of how we speak about FGM. We looked at it as something that we needed to eradicate as opposed to an organized form of violence, which we needed to end. And um, now I'm on the bridge of starting a new organization called the Five, Found um, the Five Foundation, because ultimately only 2% of all global funding goes to women on the front line. And the work to end FGM is being led by African women who have been fighting for years and years. In, um, in the late 80s, um, Edward Arden, um, who is a, 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 a Somaliland activist, went to the UN, protested outside the UN to say that they need to take African women seriously. The FGM wasn't just something that happened because people didn't understand it was horrible and harmful. It was something that happened to keep women down. Um, 30 years on, I sit here as a survivor of FGM to say that we are still banging on those doors. We are still asking for the international community to trust African women to be the real agents of change. Um, it's easier for you to get access to end FGM if you're a white man from the West than if you are an African woman who's, who, who's fighting on the front of it. So um, as we talk about some solidarity, I really want you to truly stand in solidarity with African women, African women who've led this campaign to the UN, African women who are risking their lives on a day-to-day -day basis, who have been arrested in places like Mali, in Somalia, who have been um, raped because they want to speak out against FGM. And I want to say that um, progress is possible but it's not inevitable. Things could slip back. 70 million girls could be failed by 2030. And I don't really want to be sitting here in 10 years' time and asking us to save another 70 million girls.